Hey guys, I'm Saurav. Welcome to the channel. Today, I'm going to talk about my favorite lens of all time, the 70-200 2.8. If you ask me, Saurav, you only have to choose one lens. Nine out of ten times, it's going to be the 70-200, unless I'm shooting something very specific for which I need a macro or a wide-angle lens. I'm super excited to tell you why I love this lens. So, without wasting any time, let's get started. Before I tell you why I absolutely love this lens, let me tell you two things that I don't like about this lens. One is it's not cheap. It's an expensive lens. When I bought this lens, this lens actually costed me more than the camera body that I was using that time. And two is it's very heavy. When you're talking about lenses with wider aperture, it's going to be heavier. Let's say for example, if I compare the 7200 2.8 with 7200 f4, the f4 is going to be significantly lighter. Wider the aperture, heavier are the lenses. Whether or not the extra weight is worth it, that's subjective, but according to me, it's totally worth it. Let me start with reason number one, and that is the depth of field at 200mm 2.8. Now, I have made a video about focal length, and I've explained the relation between the focal length and the depth of field and the background blur. But in short, the more you zoom, you will get less depth of field and more background separation. This lens produces amazing bokeh and background blur at 200mm 2.8. Every time I post a photo taken with this lens, people ask me in the comments, which lens did you use? How are you getting that amount of background separation? This lens is absolutely crazy for portraits and I also love it for shooting b-rolls. If I want to capture a tight shot of a subject, this is the lens I go for. Reason number two, it is extremely sharp. If you compare a kit lens with a similarly priced prime lens, let's say 50mm 1.8 for example, you will notice a huge difference in image quality. The prime lens will be much sharper and will produce much vibrant results. That's not the case with the 70 to 200. This lens is extremely sharp throughout the zoom range. Generally with zoom lenses, when you're shooting at the highest focal length that the lens can go to, the sharpness reduces drastically. Well, with this, I have shot a lot of images at 200mm and it's stack sharp. Recently, I was shooting Supermoon and this one was shot at 70mm and this one at 200mm. If I zoom all the way in, you can see the images are extremely, extremely sharp. This lens was released six years ago. It's not the latest version of the 72-200 that's there in the market right now, but still it performs really well. I shot these images with the Z9 and that's a higher megapixel camera. For a higher megapixel body, you need good quality glass, good quality optics, and the 72-200 has amazing quality glass inside it. The next reason is versatility. Now, 70 to 200 might not seem like a very huge zoom range, but this lens can allow you to actually shoot a lot of different genres. I have shot portraits, sports, landscape, architecture, and even streets with this particular lens. It might seem a bit odd. How could you shoot street with a zoom lens? The thing is, just because I have that extra zoom range, I can be at a distance and still photograph the subject without disturbing them. If you're new to street photography and you're shy to approach people, using a zoom lens can be very helpful. A lot of people think that there are specialized lenses for every genre and those are the best lenses for those genre. If you're one of them, you might be wrong. For example, in landscape photography, wide angle lens is considered to be the best lens. But what if I don't want to capture a wide perspective? What if I want to capture a tighter perspective? That time, zoom lens is going to be useful. As I said in the beginning of the video, 9 out of 10 times, I will prefer this lens over any other. And that is because of how versatile this lens is. Wherever I go, doesn't matter what I'm shooting, I'm always carrying this lens. It's a bit heavier, adds a bit of weight to the camera bag, but still, I'm always carrying this lens with me. The next reason is shooting in low light. When I'm shooting in low light, I prefer using prime lenses because prime lenses have wider aperture and I, I don't have to crank up my ISO because I can open my lens up to 1.8 or 
If you want similar image quality in a zoom lens, the 7200 2.8 is the best option. When it's pitch dark, it's difficult to shoot at 2.8, but right now it's blue art and when you're shooting in blue art, 2.8 is a manageable aperture. Most of the times when you're shooting in low light, you're using a slightly slower shutter speed and when you're shooting at higher focal length, you can introduce a lot of camera shake. Most of the 7200s that I have seen have some kind of vibration reduction, image stabilization in it. Nikon calls it vibration reduction too for this lens, whatever the name is, basically, it reduces the camera shake and it makes a huge difference to be honest. One of the problems with zoom lenses in low light is slower focusing. I have not faced that issue with the 7200 2.8 and that is mainly because of the wider aperture. The combination of wider aperture, versatile zoom range and image stabilization makes this one of the best lens there is in the market. That's it from this video guys. If you like the video, press the like button. New to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's reach 1 million as soon as possible. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.